All right, Matthew, let's switch gears now to this sure. bizarre case, the Slender Man case. Two 13-year-old yeah. girls accused of brutally stabbing a classmate to please a fictional character that they that is known as Slender Man. They're going to be charged as adults. So how will a judge's ruling to charge these girls as adults potentially change the outcome of what they face in terms of the sentencing? Sure. I mean, the, the basic difference between the juvenile system and the adult system is if you're in the juvenile system, we think of you as a kid. And if you're a kid, we're trying to sort of work with you, get you to a place where you can make your life good, you can go on, you can get out of the system, you can be productive uh, as an adult. It, it really is a lot more rehabilitative. It's about redemption. It's about, you know, the phoenix rising from the ashes of whatever bad act brought them there. Uh, if you're in the adult system, there's a little bit of that, but folks in the system are just, they're more willing to give up on you. They're more willing to say, this is a bad egg who needs to go away for a long time. It's focused a lot more on punishment and a lot less on redemption. And I think that's what you'll see in terms of what, what could happen to these two girls uh, as this case moves forward. And what kind of defense might their attorney put forth? You know, as you look at it, when you think about a 12-year-old, you think about somebody who's 12, they're 11, these things can be real for them in a way that they're just not as an adult. Uh, and what I would expect the defense to do is to get some mental health experts in there, get some, some experts on what uh, kids believe and how they process the world. If they can show, if they can convincingly show that these kids really believe that Slender Man was out there and really believe that Slender Man was, was coming to get them and they needed to sign up on Team Slender Man uh, in order to, to, to avoid harm to themselves, they might have a duress defense going. You know, if, if, if I hold a, a gun to your friend's head and make you rob a bank, you, you, if you're on trial for the bank robbery, you can say, well, it was duress. I had to. The, the guy had a gun to my friend's head. Uh, and I think they'll, they'll try to make the same kind of argument here. It, whether or not it works really depends on whether they can convince folks that these 12-year-old these girls really believed in Slender Man, that they were, they were believing what they said they believed. Yeah, it's a, it's a fascinating argument, Matthew, because we sometimes think of uh, defenses that are used in terms of insanity or mental health issues as being one that is used for adults. But you make a really good point that if these kids, and they are children, if they thought that this guy was real, that this guy was coming to get them, is that a pretty unusual defense, or is that common when you have something like this, even though this is an unusual case? Well, look, I mean, everything about this is unusual, right? Uh, I, I, haven't, I haven't seen a case where kids came to believe something uh, like this from the Internet and then went out and stabbed somebody or committed some other act uh, like that. Uh, I think it's, it's really it's the first time we've seen this intersection of childhood and the Internet and this kind of supernatural uh, myth uh, it come out. And, and it'll be interesting to watch to see how it... How it, how it plays out. But you know, kids' brains are different. And the internet is a new, freaky thing that, that no one's really quite sure how we, under, the, how we understand how it works with kids and with the way they think and the way they perceive the world. Uh, and I think this case could be a, a big case for how, how we think about children and the internet. For sure. I mean, children believe, a lot of little kids, my nephews, for example, believe that Santa Claus is real. There's nothing you're going to ever tell them that doesn't make them believe that Santa Claus is coming uh, on Christmas Eve. And so I can yeah. see how this can play into that. Absolutely. I mean, my son is 11. If I watch Doctor Who with him, he, he won't sleep for three nights because he thinks the Doctor Who people are coming to get him. Yeah. Fascinating. Attorney Matthew Kaiser, thank you so much, Matthew. Thank you.